Hey YouTube, how's it going? It's Quentin here and welcome to tutorial number two. And in this tutorial, we are going to create our very first website using HTML and CSS, or mostly just HTML for now. So uh, hopefully you went and did all the homework that I talked about in the first video where you downloaded a text editor. So in this case, I'm gonna be using Sublime. Um, and then hopefully you've also got MAMP downloaded and installed. Uh, if you haven't, just go ahead and check the description of this video and you will find the links to download and install MAMP. Um, and then uh, you will be good to go <laughs> to follow along with this tutorial, right? So now that MAMP is installed, uh, open it up and hit the start servers button. That should open up your browser and it should open up this website. Um, and if I go ahead and click on my website, that is going to open up the page where uh, I should actually see my website. But right, right now, I haven't actually created any website files, so I've got this little index of. Okay, but make sure that you are visiting the address localhost, uh, colon, and uh, whatever your port number is. So, you know, uh, if you clicked on the start service button, in MAMP, then uh, this button over here in the, or this page should have opened, sorry, and this uh, menu item should take you to your site. If for some reason this menu item is missing, I noticed on my Windows videos this was missing, uh, then you can go ahead and just type in uh, the URL. Uh, and to get your port number, uh, it's always gonna be localhost, but this, these last four digits could be different. They might actually be two digits. It could be port 80. Um, so just go over to MAMP and under preferences and under ports, whatever your Apache port is here, that's what you would type in after uh, localhost. And that's how you'd get to, to this website or to this URL, all right? Uh, so now that uh, that is all out of the way, let's take a look at creating our first website. So open up your text editor, and the first thing you wanna do is go file, save as, and now you need to save this document in a very specific space or place on your computer. Uh, and that place is going to be applications and map and htdocs. If you are using a Windows computer, it will be your C drive and then MAMP and then htdocs. So pretty much similar, except you're not going to applications, you're gonna to go to the C drive. Uh, okay, so now that I'm in htdocs, I'm gonna save this file as index.html. Now make sure you save it as index.html because uh, MAMP will pick up if your file is named index, and then it'll go straight to that page. It'll treat index.html uh, as a home page, basically. So let me go ahead and hit save. Uh, and now, if I go back over to the browser and hit refresh, instead of getting that index thing over here, I should now have just a blank page because we've got an index file, but our index file is also blank. Uh, so what we need to do now is actually code something into our index file. So um, I'm gonna just start off by typing HTML and Sublime has these really cool shortcuts and autocomplete options, which is you know why I like using Sublime. But if I hit enter, now that I've got this little drop-down list appearing, uh, it will autocomplete my HTML uh, tags and so here you've got a bunch of different uh, HTML tags. Uh, so uh, let me go ahead and just run through these uh, one by one. And the first one is a doc type declaration. Uh, so this is uh, a doc, it basically tells the browser, okay, uh, we're using HTML5. Uh, previous versions of HTML actually had a really long doc type declaration that could sometimes go over two lines where it was like document type equals XHTML version one point blah, 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 blah. Like it was super long. But because we're using HTML5, uh, the doc type declaration is super simple. You just uh, type in doc type 
HTML and uh, obviously it needs to be in these smaller than and greater than signs because all HTML tags are surrounded by these smaller than and greater than signs. That's kind of how we know that they are a tag uh, and how the browser knows that this is a tag, right? And uh, the doc type declaration just gets an exclamation point at the beginning of it, um, just, you know, because that's the syntax of it. Uh, then the rest of them, as you can see, are pretty normal. Uh, you've just got the smaller than sign, the greater than sign, and a word in between them. So this first tag means that our HTML document starts here, and the last tag means that our HTML document ends here. So most of the tags that we're gonna be learning about in HTML are double tags, which means they have a start and they have an ending. There are some tags that have, are singular tags. There's it doesn't have an ending, you just need the, the beginning starting tag of it. Uh, but for now, most of these tags, as you can see, are all double tags. So our website starts here and ends here, and inside of our website, each website is actually made up of two parts. So every single website has this. Every single website has a head and a body. Now, whatever goes in the body is what goes in this big white section. This is what the users get to see. But whatever goes in the head, this is kind of the brains of your website. So this isn't stuff that the user necessarily needs to see, but it is kind of stuff that your website needs to work. Uh, one of these things is a title. Uh, funny enough, the user can actually see the title, but it doesn't go within this big white space. It actually goes up here in the opening uh, tab of your website. So uh, let's go ahead and type something into the title. Um, we'll just say this is the page title. And for the body, I'm just going to type in some random text like... Um, Hooray! I just made my first website. And now, um, well, I actually wanna go ahead and indent this, and I'll talk about indenting um, in just a second, but let me go ahead and hit save, and come back over the browser, and hit refresh. And now you can see that I've got, this is the page title displaying in the tab of my browser, and in the actual body of my website, I have, hooray, I just made my first websty. <laughs> so yeah, typos are not worth uh, <laughs> the time in fixing. But yeah, that is our first website created. And let me just talk about indentation real quick because uh, you can see that uh, our title is actually indented and I went through the trouble of indenting this text because, um, it makes our document more readable. Uh, so it's really just there for the human eye to be able to see your code and read your code a little bit better. If everything was kind of munched up against the side like this, I wouldn't know that my title is actually inside of my head. Uh, I mean, right now this is a fairly simple document. We only have nine lines of code here. Uh, so it isn't too confusing, but if you get to having a website with a hundred lines of code, uh, it could be a little bit confusing to see that this title was actually inside of this head tag or that this um, text over here was actually inside of the body, which is why we indent code because now I know uh, exactly that this code is inside the body and this is inside of the title or this title is inside of the head. And now that I've explained all of that, I'll see you guys in the next video. I just wanna send a shout out to my sponsors at Dev Mountain. They run a coding bootcamp with courses on iOS development, UX design, and web development. And they can teach you everything you need to know to get a job within this field. And they'll do it within 12 weeks, which I think is a rather impressive timeline. So go ahead and check out their website. The link is in the video description. And if you do contact them, make sure to tell them that I sent you. Hey, thanks for staying until the end of the video. That really means a lot to me. Now, while you're still here, there are a few things that you can do to help. First of all, if you haven't already, subscribe and watch another one of my videos. 
And if you wanna help me make more content more often, or if you feel that my content is just worth paying a little bit of money towards, you can check me out on Patreon. You can also check me out on social media. I will leave the links next to me. So go ahead and click on something and I'll see you guys next time.